start from Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at the same, cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. On this holiday season, I want to take sort of a contemporary approach to this text. We have been in the first and second chapter of Luke for the entire month, and we have been sharing the advent, the first advent, the second, the third, and this is the season that we will celebrate the birth of our Lord. I want to take a moment and ask the church to celebrate our wonderful choir, all, all of our choirs, all month. Yes, Lord. Watching that foolishness 
and then repeating that stuff in their relationships and wondering why it's not working. All right. oh my God. But the real housewives of Bethlehem come to us from St. Luke chapter 1 where we're introduced to uh, Elizabeth, we're introduced to Mary, and we're introduced to Anna. And I want to share with you that in this Christmas season, there are three distinct things that we need to understand. First of all, Mary is a very interesting character in the fact that she lives out of a season of uncertainty. And I don't know about you, but while others may be celebrating, there are others that are crying because the holidays is a season of uncertainty. Not because people have lost loved ones. That is a sense of pain. That's a sense of grief. And I want to share with you that I got, um, got a message from one of my former members uh, yesterday. And they just simply said, it's been so many years, and it's been more than 10 years, but it still hurts. I knew exactly what they were talking about. And I had to get back to them to say, listen to me, that there is no expiration date on grief. Can I help somebody? That you, you might have lost a loved one, you might have lost somebody close to you, and it's been 10 years and 12 years, and somebody's nudging you, telling you to get over it. Let me give you this story. When my grandfather died, I knew when it was January 11th for almost 20 years, because my grandmother would take the same position in the sunroom, in the sun porch, and she would cry day and night. She was inconsolable, and we would sit there absolutely not knowing what to do, but what we understood is that when you lived your life with someone, and you walk a life path with someone, and you become one with that person, when that person is no longer there, then watch this, a part of you dies also. of a 
uncertainty. 